Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Brix PLC Analog I.O. as well as the system configuration for the Brix PLC. And the first thing we'll do is look at the configuration for the uh, Do More Brix PLC. If we look at our web at the website at automation dot, uh, or automationdirect.com, you'll see a configuration for Brix. And if we scroll down, first thing we do is we choose the form factor that we get or need to get started. In our case here, we're going to choose the 18 uh, series, so 18 IO. Um, and it includes two analog channels on the uh, uh, input as well. So let's include the one with the analog or the Ethernet card on it and the two analog. So automatically my picture changes to the version that we're looking for. Let's scroll down and we'll configure this series. Now the next screen we have is it allows us to um, add it and uh, do a couple more different modules. So what we do is we can edit this uh, uh, default module. That's the one we actually got to choose, but if we check, click on it, you can now um, take this unit and you can then select a number of different configurations. So we're just going to uh, select the default. Next is our internal. So we're going to choose our internal module and we'll use a um, USB. And we'll select it. And what we'll do is we'll select our card and this time we're going to select our, our analog input card and an analog output card. And those cards we're going to if I can scroll down here, you'll see exactly what I'm seeing. There we go. And we'll scroll down to our analog. And you see the cards come in a variety of different versions. We're going to use voltage uh, for each of them. So voltage input. So you see it gives me my minus 10 to plus 10, minus 5 to plus 5, 0 to 5, 0 to 10. And it's a 16-bit uh, input card that we're going to be using. So we'll select that. And then we'll also select our output card. And again, we'll scroll down. And we can select the analog, our voltage output, 8, eight, eight channel. We'll select that. Now you'll see a different wiring diagrams here. And these are zip link, so automatically we have a connector going into a bunch of terminals that we can pre-wire. So it makes wiring a little bit easier for you. Uh, if we hit edit, we can then change that to either a screw type terminal or a spring clamp terminal. So um, in our particular case, we're going to be using a spring clamp. And it changes the uh, bill of material. So again, instead of the zip link uh, unit, we're going to be using the spring clamp on the output as well and it shows you the picture of the spring clamp here we'll select that so that's it for our configuration you'll also notice that we also have this power factor here or the power configuration and what we have is uh, 1567 milliamps already supplied on the CPU itself each of these cards then and, and modules take up a certain amount of power so each of our analog, they use 42 milliamps, and my uh, internal programming port takes up 8 milliamps. So I'm well within my supply, so there's no warnings that will give, give it to me here. And now all my terminals here. And then we have a, a basic um, uh, output here, and tells us exactly what we're getting. So our total price, our total inputs is 19, output 17, and our budget. I have 1475 milliamps still to give on that CPU after my configuration. And then what I can do is I can um, proceed to uh, add this to my cart and check out or reset it. I can also uh, uh, save that bill of material so I can then send it and um, be included in part of my documentation for my overall project. So that's the, the configuration itself. Now if we look at our controller Here's what our here's what we have for a controller, and you can see here that I have my um, my CPU unit, then we have my uh, analog input unit and my analog output unit. Now the units themselves, if we take them apart, what you'll notice is that 
first of all they're color coded we have blue for input we have the red for the output and in the side of the unit we actually have a door that's on the CPU this is the same connector for everything and there we have a, the bus system here that we just connect to so we'll just stick that one back in and so we remove that door from our, our previous card then what we do is you also notice is that we have clamps here on each side of the unit and what happens is it takes these levers down that actually catch inside so it's a very uh, good system in order to uh, snap together per se so if I line up the cards and then push them they actually snap in and are very snug to each other so very good design in that aspect you'll also notice that um, each of these cards we have to supply 24 volts to so we have these uh, again these are my push terminals and if we want to see what the spring terminals or the screw terminals look like they look like uh, this screw terminal so what would happen is uh, instead of the push we have the screw and they would just snap in like that but in our case here what we're doing is using the spring terminals for all of our connections so what we'll do is we'll join up our uh, input here there we go and that's our system now what we'll do is these cards are not hot swappable that means that I have to remove power before powering up these cards and I have to um, then install the card and then power up the CPU unit so we'll power up the CPU unit there we go and we see my program is running currently right now and what we'll do is we will um, take a look at our software so we'll go to our do more designer software and we'll call it up and what we'll do is get connected online in USB so there we go we're starting to communicate now and what you'll notice first of all as soon as I get connected to the uh, do more it automatically will configure this for me in my dashboard and that's my dashboard right now showing and what we do is we go to the card itself and we can right click on it and you hit configure module now when you hit configure module we get some settings up here and our first of all our global settings so it tells us the name of the, um, the card that we have any information on that card itself and where it's located in this case here slot number one it tells us how many channels of that eight channel card we want to activate in this case here we'll leave all eight of them activated and now we have global status bits these global status bits tell us what's going on in the card itself so we have a self test uh, failed we have a missing 24 volt that's the 24 volt here that we have actually supplied to the each of the units here we have a data not valid and these are the three that are automatically are set up for us um, once we power up in uh, this unit. Now, if we go to uh, the first four analog in, what we can do now is we can change what each of those analog in represent. In our case here, we're going to leave it as default 0 to 10 volts. We have our range, and then we have our scaling. So our range here, if it's uh, we're actually have the uh, 15 bits so it's 0 to 32,767 we could enable the 16 bit and it brings it from a unipolar to um, uh, it, it doesn't provide a polarity to us if we use 16 so then we must use casting which we uh, talked about previously so we're going to stick to the 15 bits right now we'll enable our scaling so our scaling here will go from 0 to 32,767 counts and then it'll represent 0 to 1,000 on our CPU unit itself so we automatically scale that in and then again we can do the same thing we can enable scaling on any one of these units we can enable our, 
or poor or bipolar by individual channels themselves. So that is the settings. Then once we're finished, we just hit OK. And we do the same thing for the output side. Now the output side, again, now we have our output. We can enable how many channels we're actually uh, utilizing here. And you can see the uh, global status bits. Again, they're preset for us. We have X40, X41, and X42 representing our self test fail, our missing 24 volt, and our data not valid uh, signals. And then on our output side, what we're going to do is set again our default, which is 0 to 10 volt output. And it's a 15 bit range. It's going to be 0 to 32,767, the exact same as what our input range would be, was. And then we enable our scaling. In this case here, our scaling input is going from 0 to 1,000, and that's going to represent 0 to 32,767 on our output side. We could also clamp this so that anything greater um, than the range is going to be um, left at the, the minimum range, anything um, or, or left at the maximum range, anything lower than the minimum range will be left at the lower range. But because we're using the same range, then we don't need to clamp it. But that's an option that we could use. So once we're done with our configuration, we just hit OK. And now we have our system all ready to go. And just uh, we'll look at the program now. We'll go over and flip into the program. So what we see here is I've gotten a few lines up here already. And what we're doing is we're taking a look at the uh, self-check. Let's just turn on the status here. You can see that my um, self-test is OK. We have, uh, let's see, zero. Um, so self-test is fine, so that's not on. We have not missing our 24 volts because we have it powered up and our, our information is valid. So that means our first output is on. That in indicates that our PLC is good. That, that input analog input card is ready to function as, as intended. We also then have our three bit flags that we have for analog output. And again, it's indicating that my analog output is functioning as normal. Then what we do is we do some scaling uh, or we uh, do some movement and we're going to move okay if everything's okay we're going to move our input to our output so our scaling is exactly the same for input and output so we can just move that value right in so we use our engineering units within our program and then we use those same units to set our output because we've done our scaling on our card we don't need to do anything else we don't need to do uh, scaling internally in the program at all we just have to work with the actual values that we want to see so in this case here we have 0 to 1000 and then what we do is we've set up a few of the uh, outputs we have four outputs and depending on where the analog signal is at the time currently right now it's 256 it'll turn on corresponding analog output. So if it gets low, they all come on. If it gets higher, only the top one will come on. So that's our, our program in general. And what we'll do is on our PLC, we have our tester that we have a little pot with our, our battery pack that we've made before. And we're gonna plug that into our analog input And what we'll do is as we turn that down or up, you'll see that it corresponds with our signal here coming into our input. Then what we have is our analog output. Plug that in. And when we do, we have that hooked up to our um, meter and our meter will actually show our uh, voltage as we increase so what we'll do is currently right now you can see my um, analog reading going to my analog output here on this instruction 
and it's doing that because both my analog in and out are valid. So as I increase my analog, you will see the corresponding voltage is being increased over here. My um, analog's coming in, it's being scaled. My program's taking over, it's looking at that, taking variables and controlling my four outputs here. It's then taking my output and sending it out to uh, my meter and my meter's reading what signal I'm taking out. So right now I'm outputting 1.3 volts. So I keep going and at 1.77, keep going and I've got uh, uh, 254, 2.54 volts on the output. I've got 255.69 on my input scaling. So I keep going and you can see I can go right up to the maximum on my 9 volt battery. All right. So currently right now it's reading um, on my input uh, 950.22 and that relates back to 9.42 volts on my output going back out. So that is our um, analog I.O and our configuration for our BRICS PLC. Now all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca and if you like this video and like to see more there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data locking. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.